Good Monday, makers. Welcome back to another episode of Maker Pipe Monday. I've got a special, special episode for you this week. We are going to show all of the builds that we did when we went up to Saunders Machine Works in Ohio to help them get started on Maker Pipe. Let's get into it. We went up to visit Saunders Machine Works a few weeks ago and had a blast. We helped them build five different things that they needed to overhaul their shop. And Saunders Machine Works is a, a special place with a special owner, John Saunders, who has a channel called NYC CNC that is all about machining. And he's been doing this channel for a long time, over 10 years. He's got over a thousand videos on his channel. He's got a big, big subscriber count at almost 400,000 subscribers. And we got the opportunity to, to go help him. Now, when I rewind about five years ago, when I was trying to figure out how to make the stamping dies for Maker Pipe, when I had a quote for $100,000 in stamping dies to start Maker Pipe for the Kickstarter, I checked out his channel. He helped me learn how to machine and machine those dies myself and create the parts for Maker Pipe. So, um, I got a chance to thank him for that in person, but that's the power of YouTube. And we've been following his channel for a long, long time. And we got a chance to go up there and help him out, Jake and I. And uh, that happened kind of in a unique way. I follow him on Instagram too. And I was just flipping through my feed and I saw he was looking for a packaging table. And I just commented just, hey, what do you think about maybe building it? And that's all I said. And he got back in touch, said, yeah, we, what do you have in mind? I told him about Maker Pipe, and the conversation started there. Well, he decided to uh, buy some of our connectors, buy our products, and I just offered, hey, since your channel and your advice has been so helpful to me over the years, let me come up there and help you out. And he agreed um, and invited us up there, and it was a, a great time. So... Um, that's a little bit of the backstory about how we got there. And we've got a video too, if you want to check it out, of kind of a vlog style of us building up there. There's a link on our website and you can fi find that on the channel. Um, but today we're going to look at what we actually build and talk a little bit more in depth about it. The, um, the thing that John Saunders makes now and Saunders Machine Works our machined products that help the machinists more along that theme, right? And he needed five things to be part of his shop overhaul. And the first thing he needed was custom assembly tables for his ModVice product family. And I'm gonna go to his website and show you guys his ModVice. This is a ModVice and this holds down metal in a CNC so that you can machine on it. And he keeps it in one place. And he, he machines these parts in-house. And he needed a place to put them together from all the components. So that's what we tackled first. And this is what we created, was a ModVice assembly table. We did two of these, one for aluminum and one for steel. And one of the really important goals of this whole thing was to make it easier for them to do their work. So uh, they told us about how they do the assembly, how they do the packaging. And then we brainstormed on how to create this workspace uh, that would make it easier for them. And this is what we created. You can see that there's, there's bins in the back. These are the machine parts on the lower level. And then you've got all the hardware up above. And the reason for this is just keeping all of the materials, all of the tools at your fingertips. So you don't have to go searching for, you know, this across the shop or where's the tool, those kind of things. They all live within arm's reach of the person doing the assembly. Uh, and we included a, a hex wrench because that's the one tool they use, paper towels, anti-seize. It was all there. Uh, and you can see that the way that we did that with conduit and maker pipe was we created this slanted shelf with small um, pipes going from front to back, and that was at an angle using the T-connector, and it connects to the back bar right there. 
and then we put um, a stopper bar all the way across to just prevent the, the bins from coming down. And that worked pretty well. And this was built into the overall structure of the table. This back pipe is continuous running from the top all the way down to the caster. And then we rested the front part of this right on the table. You can see this beautiful um, plastic table. It's about an inch thick, high density polyethylene table that he had in his shop. Uh, really expensive stuff, but beautiful at the same time. And we just rested the front part of this rack on that table and used a, a clear rubber foot here uh, to not scratch it up. And then they also needed some place for the boxes. So here's a picture of where the boxes sit on these pipes down below. And also we did some reinforcing too. Now these, especially the steel ones that they machine, heavy parts, they had a couple dozen in a bin. So the weight on this part of the table was significant. So we just braced that a little bit after we saw that. We ran horizontal 45s from the, the vertical post in the back all the way to a center pipe that we put in between. And that, uh, that did the trick, that supported it just fine. It took the weight from the center and then transferred it down to the legs. So that came out great. We did two of those, again, two assembly tables. And um, the team worked, you know, we worked closely with their team to find out all the details. They said they liked them and then we moved on. The next one we did is a material cart. So this was for transporting the fixture plates. And I'll go back to the website to show you those. These were the fixture plates. And again, this is a, a machining uh, tool. There it is, there's the fixture plate. That's a, a large flat surface that you bolt inside of the machine. And then you can put the mod vices and different work holding onto these threaded holes. Each one of these holes are a threaded piece where you can uh, bolt something into. And there it is mounted in the machine. Uh, but these are big. This one like 40 inches by 20 inches. They're thick steel or aluminum. So in building a cart for these things, we needed to be strong. And you can see there's a lot of structure here uh, for the cart and a lot of casters. Um, each plate could be upwards of 150 pounds, so we needed to make sure that the casters could not withstand that weight. Each of the casters that we sell, they're rated to 150 pounds each. And we've got nine of them here, um, so that's about 1,350 pounds worth of capacity. Um, and you can see we also reinforced well, I should go back. These are where the pallets would sit vertically as they were being stored in between their machining process and the QC. And we also reinforced underneath that with this kind of strut structure here. You got two horizontal pipes joined by a lot of T's and, and small stubs to kind of give it that rigidity underneath where the pallets were gonna be stored. Uh, and this was cool too. We d cool too. Uh, excuse me. We took PVC pipe and put it over the conduit and over the connectors to prevent any scratching or anything like that to protect uh, their machined pallets. And I think we used one inch PVC schedule forty to go over the conduit, and then I believe one and a quarter, maybe one and a half to go over that PVC and the connectors. So there was a piece of the 180 degree connector here and that pipe slid over it. So there was no chance of it touching anywhere. And then the other part of that was they had a section for the pallet drying and that was this front section where they could lay it down, blow it off from the coolant in the machining process and then it would go in the back, um, stood up before it got QC'd quality controlled or quality checked. Um, yeah, so that's the fixture plate. I really like how this came out. I think they did too. This was what for one of their product lines for one machine. And uh, I hope it worked out and I hope they uh, replicated it and find it as a good solution. We left them with a bunch of connectors 
where they're going to start the building process and further customize these builds and then create new builds as they as they have the need for. But that was the fixture plate. And after the fixture plate uh, gets quality checked, they needed a place to package it as well. And that's what we created here. This is storage for the boxes. They had two boxes for every fixture plate, an inner and an outer box to protect it. And then these two blocks are where they did the packaging. So they would sit down, sit the fixture plate down. Uh, actually, they'd put the boxes down first, then put the fixture plate, then wrap it all up. And they needed an access underneath as well as on top and all around the side. So it kind of had this open uh, space to it. And you can see that this is just uh, two by fours, but they were one hole strapped to the conduit and it kind of created uh, just the framework for the box storage and the packaging table. And that worked out good. And then the last build, the reason we were there was the, the custom packaging table. And like I said before, I saw a post uh, of John wanting to buy this Uline shipping table, which is great, but thousands of dollars, not really perfectly fit to their process. And that's where I thought we could help them and MakerPipe could help them. And this is what we created. So when we started building this, and this one took almost a whole day to do with Jake and I, um, he outlined, okay, these are the things I like about the Uline shipping table. These are the things I wanted to change. And throughout that whole process, we were also talking to the person who does their shipping to get little tidbits of how we might be able to change the design of this to make it work better for them. Like for instance, having their tape dispenser at working level, this is um, a water activated tape dispenser where you pull this handle and it gives you 20 inches of you know, their tape with the water already applied and then you put it right onto the cardboard box and it sticks really well. Um, so they wanted that in a good position because I used that a whole lot. So we mounted that right on this second shelf right below or even with their work surface. And then a few other things is we, we made uh, storage for the cardboard boxes, both standing up vertically or laying down. And then they had a second shelf below the main works space right here that the packaging tape dispenser sat on but also for other tools and materials and then this whole top section was custom as well they wanted boxes up top that they could reach and the reach was an important part we had to try and make that as close to the person that doing the packing as possible while still having enough room so we made that up top and then hung some labels and packaging paper and bubble wrap here down below where it was easy to grab. And this came out good, this label rack, where it's just an L drop down to hold all the labels on spools. This bubble wrap, we didn't, we didn't give enough space to that because we didn't realize that the bubble wrap came on these like enormous rolls. Uh, so that didn't work, but they had some ideas on how to change change that as well. And that made up the same the top section of the packaging table. And again, we did the same thing where the back pole was continuous and then the front pole of this top rack rested directly on the table. And that was the same as the Modvice assembly tables. Um, and you can see we did one slanted shelf for their miscellaneous items and their um, different flyers that they put in the packages and stickers and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that's the, the custom packaging table that we built for them, including all five builds that we did for John and Saunders Machine Works. And it was a great experience. Um, please go and if you're interested in seeing more and seeing our experience there, go check out our video that we did um, and definitely take a look at John's ch channel, NYC CNC. Saunders Machine Works. And uh, if you like these builds and you want to see more builds uh, made out of conduit and maker pipe, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you next time. Take care.